Smurd P video and today we are looking at Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So I've got my thing all in the wrong place. Mighty Morphin issue 11 and it always throws me off because I just want to say Power Rangers afterwards. So apologies for the terrible start with my camera. You would think that I would be more of a professional and stop it and start again. No, that is not me. You both know I'm not professional. I do lots of crazy weird crap when I'm doing it. I've even got a coffee stain there just for you. That was actually foolish. I feel like I should have cleaned it before I put my nice comic there. So we got this nice cover with Red Ranger, White Ranger, and Zella on the front. And let's open up the first page. And let's just make sure we get that first page in there. We got a fan over there in case you're interested. And I just not my wife's work clothes off. Real details I'm giving you here this morning. Oh my goodness, this is terrible. Right, okay. So this is written by Ryan Parrott. Illustrations by Marco Renner. Waters on the colors with the assistance of Sara and Katira. And Ed is on the letters as always. Ed is everywhere. He is always on the letters. So, the first couple of chapters, we step back 10,000 years ago. And we have Zordon, so, sorry, not Zordon, we have Sofron, if I pronounce that correctly, I probably haven't. He is in a bad way. His face is gone, his body is gone, and he is being pumped with uh, medicine. Uh, the only issue is that... Oh my goodness, I could not be doing a worse review of this issue ever. I'm so sorry. Um, and it's not because I'm hungover. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Sophron is in a bad way. Zartus is uh, limited medical surprise and he's struggling to get these as well. But he feels like these things will affect his mind as well as healing him. They can't get the healers because he's uh, been told that he died a hero. Nobody needs to know the truth. I'm not sure why they don't need to know the truth because it wasn't... I guess it's because Sofron was going to take the crystal to hide it. I guess that was the idea behind it or use it. Um, it was a couple of issues now. But I feel like the, there is no reason why the elders cannot know about him being alive. But Zartos is clearly playing games. I'm not sure if he actually feels guilty at this point of what he's done or whether it's more malicious that he is in Dark Spectre's um, employ, so to speak. Uh, however, Zofron now is... Um, he's gone, he says. He sacrificed his life to protect the great and powerful Eltar that did not deserve it and... His death will be the death of them and the universe, basically. So starts the transition into Zed. So I hope these continue. Uh, meanwhile, back on Earth. So this is like an in-between issue. So back on Earth, um, Billy, um, who has been banned from the command center, is trying to reconnect with his friends. And he sort of says why he did it. Um... And for some of them, that's good enough for them. However, they feel Zordon is, is not going to be good enough for him. But in reality, Billy just wanted to repair it just to try. And if it didn't work, it didn't work. However, if it did work, they had a new ally. Uh, meanwhile, Matt tries to apologize Kimberly for what he did once when uh, Zed incorporated in the dome and he's an uh, alien invasion. So... In, in reality, he just talks about, you know what, we tried to fight and we, we didn't fight. We we played um, we played our part to be um, get in there, so to speak, and just just so that we could buy some time because there was no other options. Which it, it's true. You you can you can see these things anyway. That that's what it felt like. That's what happened. And then they talk about Grace and Zordon and who's using who. And Matt makes a very good point here. When um, Zordon's from another planet, what makes you think if it's a choice between Earth and his world, what do you think he's going to choose? 
which is very good point. Very good point, which will bring you towards the end as well. So, meanwhile, uh, Zorn is talking to the Rangers about going into the moon to rescue Zella. And Zartus arrives as well. And he has brought a team. Zag, Zeta, Zero, Zero, Zenith. Are all the Eltorians' names start with a Z? That is an interesting point. However, he talks about his team. They are aggressors. They're brought in for special occasions. And they're going to come in. And we're going to save Zella. And we're going to stop Zed. And then you can be take your place in a great Etorian alliance. Uh, so these guys are getting to know each other and their powers. So one can do dimensional hops and fight. One doesn't like being on the ground and she flies. One built a great big thing who's really small. And he thinks it's wild that he met Zorn because his dad's named after him. Which is cool. And this dude likes swords and doesn't really talk. There's always got to be one of those that doesn't talk. Indeed. Yes, I remember Tilk's name. Sorry. Um, joke from a previous video where I couldn't remember Tilk's name at all. I can remember Christopher Judge's name, just not his character's name. Uh, now, Zartus puts it to uh, Tommy about Matt, and, you know, when, when we go into some of these battles, we're going to need all the range of powers. And let me be clear, any that aren't playing ball, literally, I can just remove them and we will replace with somebody who isn't going to uh, hinder your command. Meanwhile, back on the ship, uh, he reveals his real plan. This rescue plan is a perfect opportunity for, um, for you to see the rangers up close, find out their weaknesses and understand them as well. Which is great. Uh, however, Zella has arrived. And she says that through your training I escaped. He hasn't brought it. They know that she is lying. Which is easy. Meanwhile, Grace and Billy have a, a very interesting moment here. I do, I do enjoy this a little bit. So, Billy is a... Uh... Sorry, first of all, they talk about the ship. Grace is like, are you aware there's a big warship in there? He's like... No, oh, there's just a ship in there. It's not, I was told it was not a, a warship. And she says, well, it's got all this, lots of guns. It's a warship. And something bad is about to happen. And then she asks what he's working on. And he says, you know what? I'm the genius. I'm working on this. I don't need to tell you. You're going to have to trust me. And she says, well, you know what? You work for me. So you should be changing that. Um... But she's, you know, in the end he says, I've just never had access to Zed's technology. So he's clearly got a hold of something, and he's clearly creating something that may hold the tide in the upcoming war. Because that's right, war is a brewing. So Zartus um, is saying that we want to get the, the fleet to Earth. And the Imperials um, will be the least of your worries when they get here. And there's a lockdown. And Zella is there, ready to take him out. And she, she, she challenges him because she's heard the story from Zed. That's what issue 10 was about. That's Zed telling his story about how he became Lord Zed. And you kept this to yourself the whole time. He said it was to protect Elta. Everything he's done is to protect Elta. Including the resurrections of the Imperial Reels. And she says, you're just a sad little man who wants to play God. Because that, that, that's, be it. that's it. You know, this is about playing God, about being the powerhouse. Bringing the Imperials back. Whether they are what the Eltorians have always used, we're not sure. Or whether this is just Zartus' play to be the all-powerful ruler in the universe. Whether he says he's, maybe he does believe he's doing the right thing. Maybe that's true. We're not too sure. Or maybe he just wants to make a play to be the big bad. He wants to be the dark specter of the universe. Uh, so Sailor goes about trying her assassination. It does not last long. It is over quite quickly. As you can tell, it's over really quickly. So um, 
There we go. So Sartos approaches uh, Zoran to tell us that it's safe. We're sending it back to Alturian. That's the ploy to say that she is safe. You don't need to see her. You don't need to witness anything. And he says, I need the power coins to take on the Imperials. They do not. They should not be wounded by teenagers with attitude. They need to be held by warriors. People that are trained already. People that will use the power in his mind to its fullest to defeat the enemy. And he says, uh, my allegiance. So Zorn says, my allegiance is always will be withheld to whatever you require. So, yeah, there we go. Zorn's just giving it up. He's going to give up power points. Whew, that adds to some dilemma. Except, dun dun dun. Zorn was playing him. Zella failed in her assassination mission, but she had already spoken to Zorn about everything. So they know what's going on, so he's just playing. Playing along. So even with her and Farn's warning, the Aturian invasion is upon us. Now, if I'm correct, which I, I, I may be correct, I think there's issue 12, and then that Aturian war happens, and I'm looking forward to it, because it's all been building up to this, hasn't it? For that, and the Imperials all coming in all coming together for one final blow. So um, I really enjoyed this issue. Um, it's like a stop filler, but it was needed because you couldn't just jump straight in that war after issue 10. You had to build this. This build up is perfect. So I really hope this is the event that we've wanted. Let's be honest. Shattered Grid was an amazing event. Necessarily Evil didn't really feel like an event as such. It was kind of like um, an ongoing story to set up the next phase that's what I saw that as and fit in some of those gaps but this feels like a real event coming so I'm very excited for the Aetarian War so um yeah please subscribe to my channel if you like my stuff um please comment and tell me your thoughts on this issue have you got this issue are you into Power Rangers have you been watching since you were age 10 like me um that first episode came on and on GMTV in the UK um I think it was GMTV back then must have been. Um, and most importantly, embrace the geekiness. Take care. Goodbye, folks.